elements. I have to say in the third series that presupposed that there was going to be a fourth series. And I think one of the most important was the idea that I had that, that Robin, or rather Robert of Huntington, was in fact Guy of Gisborne's half-brother. And uh, that takes a bit of constructing, actually, if you think about it for a minute. Um, but it came to me because I was at a, a do or a party or something in Bristol. And uh, I was talking to somebody. I said, isn't it interesting? There's only two blondes in the room. And one of them's um, the guy of Gisborne. And the other one is Robin Hood. I think I'd better go. Guy's father. It's the Earl of Huntingdon. And does Guy know this? No. It would only cause harm. The Earl has an heir. I think he would have been absolutely horrified at the idea. He would have found that very difficult to, to cope with. Because Gisborne's mind tends to approach things in a fairly black or white fashion and you know, I mean it's this or it's that and that concept would have been too grey for him to cope with at all so I think he really would have had a lot of trouble coming to terms with that idea. The other thing about it was that he alibied the reason for why Robin didn't kill Guy Gisborne when he got the chance because you think why the hell doesn't he kill him you know there he is in his, at his mercy but if he knows he's his half-brother he may find that a bit difficult. Now, he can't tell the rest of the Marys, can he? Because it sort of diminishes him with the Marys. I don't know why you won't kill him. Tell me. Because you're the same. That's it, ain't it? That's what it is. You might be an old son, and he might be a knight, but you're the same breed. Yeah, you're the same kind. That's why you won't kill him. Because you can't! Here were these two blondes, deadly enemies. Guy Gisborne out to kill Robin Hood at all costs. And then to discover that he was his half-brother. So like your father. So unlike the son he gave me. He's a victim of circumstances more than anything else. Um, who finds himself in a situation that he's quite unprepared for. Um, and doesn't fully know how to, to react to except aggressively because he's a soldier. That's what, that's what he does. No, stop! Oh, God, no! Stand aside, Mother. I have a pity to do this. I said, stand aside! What have you become? What you made me. Die! He's not intrinsically bad, as opposed to, say, Mordred and Excalibur, who is just sort of evil personified. Robert Addy was a gift to us all because A, he was a brilliant, sword, uh, brilliant uh, swordsman and a wonderful rider. It's very difficult to hit your marks on a horse and Robert always did so that um, quite apart from the concept of Guy of Gisborne which he got in one which is this, the complete cad really the, the, uh, the English public school cad, if you like, who goes to Sandhurst and is a total young fascist. I liked him because he wasn't afraid to be not liked. And I think as an actor, very often you want to be liked. And he didn't care. And that was, that's always interesting. And he brought all this to, to the role, but as I say, he also, um, had these other marvelous skills, uh, techniques. He could f he could fence, he could ride, and um, hit his marks on the on the horse. Brilliant. Guy of Gisborne comes riding into Wickham Village, and treads all over the cabbages and destroys my yearly crop of food for the village. And it was very wet underneath and very muddy. It had been raining for a few days. Robert was a fantastic horseman, and you know he could tread on each cabbage. That was done beautifully. He could turn the horse on a sixpence, and he turns his horse to ride out of Wickham Village, having done the damage. And he turned the horse, and the horse's head hit me straight in the face. And I went, oh.
If the show had gone to a full series, what would I have liked to have seen happen? Gisborne for Sheriff. I, I, ooh, I was having the posters made up and the badges and everything. <laughs>